And without further ado, the Bombastic Meat Bats. Hey! We're going to play some songs. I and mean, We don't have a singer, which is great. Yeah. Who needs them? Don't need them. Uh, so, uh... Yeah, that's what we do. And then we're going to have a little chat after a few songs, all right? Is that cool? Everybody good? Too early for you? Huh?
Thank you. Woo! All right. Appropriately overplaying is that that's what we do up here. But they don't teach that here at MI, huh? Fuck no. We're going to play that. Oh, this is the song we need you guys to count to four, okay? No Prague, none of you weird European people, just like the regular normal Americans growing up on rock music. <laughs> Shut up! It's not quite as bad as shouting Freebird, but you're pretty close. We might be done. I don't know. I don't know. Coming back? I don't know. Come on. You gotta get him back. Hey, who said that? You? Get, get, you motherfucker. Listen. You want to, are you a musician? What do you put? Yes, sir. <laughs> That's right. You call me sir. I'm like 100 years old. <clears throat> what do you play? You're a drummer. Why did you say that? Because you, you love me? You love me and you go, oh, Will Ferrell. I'm not Will Ferrell, you idiot. No, I'm just fucking with you. I don't give a shit. I think it's great. I'm fucking famous because of Will Ferrell. Fuck that guy. Right? Yeah. I was in a, like an okay rock band for a while. And then that idiot said, oh, I look like you. Next thing you know, like people on the street, hey, man, you're really funny. All right, we need a one, two, three, four, but not that fast. Not like the Ramones, one, two, three, four, like a nice, mellow one. Here we go, ready? One, two, three, four. Come on,
We're going to play more notes now. It's a great establishment. You guys are so lucky you're here. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I brought a little bit of M.I. to the Meat Bats. It's a little song. This is the Mu Meat Bats Musicians Institute theme song. Theme song. bass players we got out here tonight? Only a couple? How many, how many guitar players? Woo! How many keyboard players we have? Wow, that's pretty good. How many singers? Right in the front. Ah, we're not calling you up. How many drummers we got here? Ah, see? Yeah, that's why they're such an intelligent, smart, handsome, powerful crowd. Who's the most important guy in the band? The fucking drummer, right? Yeah. Right? Not this one, but most bands. All right, here we go. This one's called Oops, I Spilled My Beer. <laughs>
We're gonna talk. You guys wanna have a chat? Wants to play more? Can we talk and then play? Okay. Ah, oh, was... see what you got. Go ahead. Yeah, I wanna know what's your practice routine when you're not on the road? What do you practice if you practice? <laughs> he doesn't have one. He never practices. I know that because he's so good. He doesn't have to. Play as much as you can, dude. That's what it's all about. Just play. Literally. I practice. Um, I play a lot, so I don't practice by myself very much. I much prefer to play with other people, being a drummer that doesn't have a melodic instrument. But um, um, if I don't play for about a week, I get a little nutty. You don't want to see me after I haven't been playing for a week. <coughs> and um, so I'm, I'm lucky I have a drum set at home, and I can bash it out but playing you know there's no shortcut you guys are all here going to school you must be passionate about some sort of music or instrument and so do it and like do it as much as you can with as many people I see lots of different kinds of faces and and you know genders and and play with everybody and as much as you can because there's no shortcut 
to like, you know, I got my beat. If you're a drummer and I got my one fill, digga, 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 psh, okay, I'm going to be playing the fucking Staples Center on the weekend. It doesn't happen like that. You have to put in the time and the hard work. There's no shortcut. Hours and hours and hours. Uh, there's some book, Liars, or something about 10,000 hours of putting, is there a book? Something like some kind of book about yes. that? What's it called? What is it? Outliers, yeah. And, and I, I, believe, I believe that that's true. And, you know, you're a young guy, so you. you got, I think, some more hours to put in, unless you've been playing since you were, like, two. Maybe you haven't. But there's no... Um, that's, that experience of doing that and, and, and is, there's nothing that can really replace that. So um, I just say play with everybody. If you love it, you're here. Just go play with the weird German guy that's in the room by himself all the time. <laughs> like, go play with that guy. Play with your friends. Play with, like, a, a jazzy kind of person, if you can find one, a reggae person. They're easy to spot. <laughs> Learn the one drop. Like, all that shit's important. Get to find a country guy, you know. Bro country. Play some of that country shit. Yeah. And, and, and that'll help you get better, I think. And, well, and, oh, you're going to get a wrenchism now. Turn on your fucking recorders, because this shit, it's like gold. If you're going to practice to a click, which is how you should practice, if you're going to practice your licks and all that stuff, put the click on two and four. It's going to develop a little bit of swing, and you're not going to play mechanically. That's one thing, one place to start. Don't beat up and down what you already know. Try to play different things that you don't know. Spend your time on where you clam. You know, we all know when we play a piece, there's a spot where we clam. We get to that point, we clam every time. Don't go back to A1 like you're doing an R&B rehearsal. I've done a million R&B gigs. They'll go, oh, we got to do the whole show now. We got to go back to the front. Don't do that. Figure out where you clam. And something that you're probably not thinking about is a lot of these guys, well, I don't know, a lot of people wind up being your peers. If you get in the business, if you get somewhere and you're successful, some of the people that you were in school with, they're going to do really well. So get to know the other guys that you're around because a lot of them, you're going to be surprised. Maybe they're not players. Maybe they're at a record company. If there is a record company in 10 years, which who knows. But you'd be surprised. You look around you, some of the guys are going to do really well, some of the girls, you know. So that would be my two cents. And like he's saying, play with everybody you can as wide variety of styles as you can. Find your voice. Next. Thank you. I had a question. Uh, how and when did you guys form? Ooh, that's a good question. Kevin's going to, because he knows all about the beginnings of our band, because he was not there. <laughs> well, I, I can talk about it. You see, these guys played with Glenn Hughes before I was around. You guys know who Glenn Hughes is? Singers? You singers? Most badass singer in the world. One of the best, actually. So these guys used to play with Glenn. Am I right? You guys would, Glenn would be late for sound check on a regular basis, I imagine, right? And you guys were always singers. typical singer. And bass player, too, don't mind. And I'm always late. You know. Anyways, they, guys, they would jam, and, and that's kind of what the seeds were, right? Yeah on the Glenn stuff, brought him in as a guest. But anyway, so... It was Detroit. That's where we got the idea. It sounds like Detroit. The Snowed Out Detroit gig. But you gotta, you gotta remember too, I've been, I've been playing instrumental music with Coleman since 1992 with Edwin Dare and then with uh, uh, my solo record and Jeff's solo records too. So I've been working with Jeff on instrumental music for a long time. But then anyways, they had this idea to get this band together and uh, they needed a bass player at the last minute. I was home making a sandwich and I had randomly called the studio to ask my buddy who owns the studio what was going on. And uh, he picked up and we were talking and, and he said, I'm working with Coleman right now. So he said, Coleman wants to talk to you. So he hands the phone over to Coleman and Coleman says, what are you doing right now? I said, I'm making a sandwich. And so he said, I need you in the studio right now. We don't have a bass player. And I'm recording with Chad and with Ed. And I said, cool. So I finished my sandwich and I got up. And I did finish my sandwich. It was cheese and uh, uh, salami yeah, with mustard. Delicious. 
And so we went out to the studio, and, and it was cool because I'd never, me and Chad are both from Detroit, but we'd never known each other. We know a lot of the same people, shall we say. And uh, he was already sound checked in the, in the drum room. And so I showed up at the studio and I plugged in. I'd never even met Chad before I recorded the first couple songs on the first Meat Bats record, actually. So we finished the first two songs, and then I said, hey, my name is Kevin, nice to meet you. And that was the birth of the Meat Bats. To answer your long question, we finished the first record, and then we made a second record, and we started playing at the Baked Potato, and they won't get rid of us there. We've been there, stuck there ever since. And we just played for fun, you know, it's like, uh, someone, someone asked about, uh, you know, what your, your practice uh, routine is. I mean, this is kind of like our poker club, but this is kind of like where we come to practice too, where there's no boundaries. We can kind of do whatever we want. And it's important to kind of have a group of players in your world where you can kind of go like, like be yourself and not like be judged and just like, you know, we have fun. Right, Ed? Absolutely. Right? Is that a good, is that a good version of the history of the band? Does that tell us thing? All right. Thank you. Next question, please. Yes, sir. How long were you here, like before the, uh, the Chili Peppers audition? How long did you go here? How long did I go to the school here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Say that again. Okay, how long were you here before you got your audition with the Chili Peppers? There you Peppers? go. Very well done. You're an excellent good public enough. speaker. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> good try. What's your name? Jason. Hey, Jason. All right, I'm good. Uh, yeah, I went. I moved from Michigan in August. Yeah, in August of 1988. So you weren't. Most you people weren't even a thought in your dad's loins at that. <laughs> that was 20. How many years ago is that? I can't do the math. 1988. Whatever the fuck that was. Long time ago. 31 years old. 70 years ago when I went here. And uh, um, I moved from Michigan, and I and I played in lots of bands, and then I uh, went to school here and started in September of 1988. And a friend of a friend kind of thing knew that the Chili Peppers were looking for a drummer and told the guys in the band that I, I got the guy from Detroit, Chad, he eats drums for breakfast, is what they told uh, Flea or somebody in the band. So... They were kind of popular, but they weren't like a big, big band at the time, but they had a record and a couple of records, and so I went and auditioned for them, and, you know, just played and had fun, and same thing I do to this day, and, and uh, I no longer attended MI after that. That's it. That's my fucking story. I'm done. <laughs> nah. School, if you can learn and get a good teacher, it's really helpful. It's really, really helpful. I would go back. I'm going to come back to MI, actually, if they'll have me. <laughs> Get my honorary degree. Something. Anyway, do you have another question? Uh, not you. Get out. Go, go away. Unless you have a mattress, go home. Your turn. Uh, thanks. Uh, my question, Chad, was um, did you find it more challenging to be someone joining a, like a previously established band or to be the one in the previously established band and then have new members come in? I don't understand the question. <laughs> like when you came into the Chili Peppers, like was that more challenging for you or you being a member and then having changing guitar players, which, which was more challenging? You and uh, Frashanti came in at the same time, right? He came a little bit before me. Yeah. I remember when you joined the band, I thought, well, he's a different fit. He he's comes from a different, they're like punk, guys and he's a rock guy I, and I remember thinking I'm from Toledo which is an hour south of Detroit and I used to see his band you probably don't know I used to see you guys yeah no Toby Red yeah prior to that Really? yeah but I remember thinking he wasn't quite the right fit visually like you know much taller. <laughs> you're more of a rock guy but but the, but you turned it what was cool is it seemed like he turned the band from a punk band into a funk band. Like, the sound of the Peppers changed for the yeah. better. Hillel was funky as hell. I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. the original guitar player. Oh, for oh, sure. Yeah. No, 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 for sure. Um, yeah, to, to, to answer your question, uh, 
it's kind of fun starting your own band with your friends, you know, and like, or people that you find and are like-minded that want, you want to play with. That's really, there's something very rewarding to that, I think is really, chemistry is everything with the team, like whatever, from music or sports or whatever it is. It's, I'm sure you guys know that are, that are in band, you find the right people and this guy's not right for whatever reason or this girl or this person. But when you finally work the chemistry and, they, and the, the part of the big part of the chemistry that I've found when I've been in bands that work together is everyone has a little different take on music or life for that matter. And, and you might not fit in uh, as a, you know, you might not be friends with that person normally if you weren't playing music together, but there's something that makes that connection and then the friendship thing follows because you both know you're going for that common goal of trying to make music together and do something special. And uh, that's really rewarding. And so at first, he was right. Like I had more of a rock background and the other guys funk and Anthony has like a hip hop thing and jazz and John loved everyone from Zappa to fucking you name it. Like everybody. But we all have different backgrounds so that's, and, and that's what made it work. You know what I mean? If we all had the same thing, it would be too linear, too, would sound, it wouldn't have a depth to it. And so, like these guys too, we all like different kinds. We have some of the same likes, but we also have some of the different likes. And I think that's really important to find something unique, to find people that aesthetically want to make some kind of unique music that's good, but it, everyone has to be a, a little weird. <laughs> cool. We're fucking weirdos, and you might think I'm weird. Nothing compared to these guys. They're just kind of quiet weird, and that's even worse. <laughs> uh, did that answer your question? Yeah, for sure. Thanks. Okay, Jeff. thanks. Yeah. thanks guys. Okay, I got it. What do you want, Alex? This guy follows us everywhere. Uh, which were the ar uh, the artists that inspired? Talking to Mike. The artists that inspired each of you to play. I mean, musicians. I know, what the fuck was that? But I'm not an aren't. So which Speak musicians? slowly, Alex. Okay, Chad. <clears throat> Calm down. Take a deep breath. Who were the musicians that inspired each of you to play? Yes. Each of you to play. Yeah. Everybody. Go ahead. You go first. I just posted on my Facebook page yesterday, Buddy Rich. I saw Buddy Rich uh, next to my hometown in 1986, and it blew my mind. And I went to college for music, and here I sit. It doomed me. I would say Pat Metheny, Sly Stone, um, Bill Evans, Jeff Beck, Gary Moore, uh, John Coltrane, some kind of different, different stuff. Um, for the rock world, I loved Southern Rock. The, uh, I got one, but that's another story. What was the piano player's name in Leonard Skinner? What was the piano player's name in Skinner? Billy Powell. Billy Powell. God rest his soul. What a wonderful player. Next. <laughs> well, Ed named his uh, people he likes. The question was, what made you start? Pat Metheny. I love the music of the 70s, and then I went back and listened to the 60s and the 50s and you know, the thing about studying music for you, young ladies and gentlemen, is that you got to go back and figure out who inspired your heroes and then who inspired them. If you like Stevie Wonder, you have to figure out who Donny Hathaway is and then who inspired him. So I'm always going back. My first concert was Kiss, and I saw that and I'm like, wow, man, I want to do that, you know. And I've, um, but, you know, their music is what it is. <laughs> So you go back and you study different styles of music. I'm into Coltrane and rock and jazz and blues and bluegrass players like Tony Rice. And, but I'm not just absorbed in guitar players. You know, it's songwriting and, and trying to convey the emotions of life in a song. You know, that's the goal, not just to show off your chops and ability. So I'm inspired by everything. I was definitely into Randy Rhodes. I saw him live and... January 30th, 1982. He died less than two months later. Yeah, he was my hero when I was 14. Yeah, I can't wait for this. No, I, 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 I
What was the question? His dad, his dad was, was the mattress king. You're killing me, Larry. Isn't he that guy? No, that's, that's, oh, that's, that's, was that the competition? Oh, you sold it to that guy. Fuck. I wanted to get a big, free, fancy mattress out of your dad, but you can't come to my house. Anyway. <laughs> this is so funny. Um. Sorry. Uh, I, I, like uh, Jeff, grew up in Midwest rock. Uh, 70s, my first concert. No, my first concert was actually Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah. Fuck Dharma. Who was the other? And the Bouchard Brothers. Yeah, that's the only one you know. <laughs> and, uh, and then I saw Kiss. Yes, I saw Kiss. And I liked the blowing up and the risers and the spitting of the blood. And I thought that was all really cool. So I really liked that show aspect of it but um yeah then i had an older brother who listened to a lot of the english hard rock blues bands of the late, late 60s and 70s led zeppelin jimi hendrix the who deep purple Gumble pie mat the hoople uh, david bowie pink floyd mm, you name it like cream all those bands yeah. Yeah. What the fuck is in the water in, in that little, tiny, little island of England? It's wild, man. There's some of the most enduring, iconic, fantastic musicians and music came out of that. I'm not even talking about the Beatles and the Stones. So um, that was early on when I, when I started playing drums when I was seven. That was really um, music that spoke to me. And then a lot of American bands and um, I lived in Detroit, so I heard a lot of Motown and the Almighty Strut. And uh, but later on, like I was saying earlier, and as Ed articulately pointed out, listen to get into other kinds of music that like you, it's great to be at home cranking up like Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. And you just love that, and I love that. But to expand your musical palette, listen to other kinds of music. Figure out like why does everybody love Bob Marley so much. Why does that connect with everybody? I don't really like reggae music, but man, people sure fucking love it. You go down on Venice Boulevard, you think Bob Marley is like fucking Justin Bieber. He's one popular motherfucker. But Bob Marley is like, you know, an incredible artist. Johnny Cash, to me, growing up in my house, my dad played Johnny Cash, Frank Sinatra, and Elvis Presley. And I'm like, this is old people's music. This is some hound dog bullshit and strangers in the night. Fuck that. <laughs> I got like, you know, squeeze my lemon till the juice runs down my leg. That's what I was talking about. Elvis and all those guys are talking about the same shit. They just put it in different ways. But I wanted to embrace my own kind of music. But those were great artists. And, they were, and I was lucky to have that music, you know. And so find out what's good about that and try to tap into that, you know. And I think it'll make you a better musician. Uh, we're going to take one more question. I know we, 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 do we kind of got to get this thing rolling, right? We're sitting up here bullshitting. Huh? We can take these last two? Okay, Woogie. Two. Not that guy. He's, he's Alex's bodyguard. <laughs> ah, sorry, pal. Yes? Okay. Um, oh, who is the best singer for you, and what is the reason? Well, what is the reason for what? Oh, who is the best singer? Yes. The best singer? The best singer that I've played with personally? Oh, Jesus, man. I've been very lucky to work with insanely talented people in my life, I have to say. If, uh, if there is a heaven's gate and if I meet God, the first thing I'm going to thank him for is the gift of being able to play with talented people through my life. I'm serious. Uh, Bryce Barnes, the singer from Edwin Dare, badass. Tadia Turunen, who I still play with, badass. Beth Hart, badass. You know, the list goes on and on. It's just like you, you want to play with people who give their heart and soul 
to what they do. And there's no place that that's more important than someone who sings because they're conveying a message of what they want to say with their art, with their music. It has to be something that's believable. Adele is a great example of this. I just bought her new record yesterday, which is fantastic, I think. But I, I like her because I hear her sing lyrics and I feel it because I believe her. It feels like she actually is living that now. I'm sure some of it's true and some of it's not, but it still made me feel that way. That's all that matters. So, man, there's just so many talented singers. The list could go on and on and on. Ed, best singer? Uh, for me that I worked with recently would be Annie Lennox. The real deal. I've been fortunate, like Kevin, to work with some really great singers. We talked about Glenn Hughes. Glenn is just a gifted singer. If you are not hip to Glenn Hughes, everybody, he is Stevie Wonder's favorite white singer. He is a, he's an R&B singer trapped in a rock band. He's crazy good, look him up. But Annie, I had the good fortune to do a bunch of live recording with her. And because of politics, we didn't have a lot of second takes. And I watched her just nail, I think we did 12 tracks in a day and a half or something. But that day and a half was con condensed to about four hours because of technical BS. So I'd have to say it's Annie. Although I've been lucky, like Kev. Here we go, next. <laughs> Gene Simmons. <laughs> You need my love, baby. Oh, you didn't work with Gene. You know, uh, no, I didn't work with Gene. I didn't work with Rob. You know what? I did t uh, two records with Glenn Hughes and three or four tours with him, and he's the, he's, he's the guy for me. Yeah, well, I talked about Johnny Cash. I got to play with Johnny Cash, record a record with him one night. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. That's a highlight. To hear that voice coming through your headphones. We did, oh yeah, the girls from the Dixie Chicks are really good. Yeah, Natalie's a really great singer. That's true. They're all good singers. Natalie's powerful. Right, so, um, one more question, and then we're going to play a couple more songs, all right? Cool? You good? All right, make it a really good question. A really good one. Maybe you want to change what you're going to say right now. Uh First off, thank you for taking the time to come see us. Aww. You just turned my Wednesday afternoon into a Friday night. Aww. That, that's a genius. That's good. Now don't fuck it up and say something stupid. Um, what are some of your... Uh, Maybe you want to stop now. <laughs> what are each of your individual, aside from music, like do you have any like rituals before you go on stage or anything like habitual that you guys do, like meditation, working out, something? I don't know. You like that question? You can answer. <laughs> well, I'll answer for myself, but I can tell you I've seen some hilarious habits in other musicians through the years. I mean, I've seen guys, I know there's ladies in the audience, but let's just say there's a lot of guys that have to spend time in the office, shall we say, before the show? <laughs> Definitely. Um, I meditate. I do transcendental meditation, yeah. uh, which is great. I always need uh, time alone. But... Uh, some people like to just go for it and be nuts, you know? Really, the best thing you can do is stretch and take a shower, not to be all serious, but you want to be loose and you want to remember to breathe when you're playing. You don't want to be all... Next. You know, it's nice to calm down and just relax. Slow the breathing down. You know, uh, there's always those types that want to kind of, I call them chief vampires. There's always the one guy that sort of somehow breaks into your world and wants to occupy your time before the gig. And, and suddenly I feel like a sense of anxiety that comes over me and my breathing gets shallow and I have to get rid of this person. You know, because they don't realize they're doing it before the gig. Like they'll come into your dressing room with their CD. Don't be that guy. <laughs> It's brutal. So after that, I just kind of calm the breathing down. If that doesn't work, I'll have a beer. <laughs> but you have to kind of mellow out, and, uh, you know, that's, that kind of helps me get into the zone. Yeah. Uh, I don't do drugs or alcohol anymore. But I used to do a lot. <laughs> don't clap for that. <laughs> yes, 
So I don't, I don't drink or do anything like that before we play. But I don't, I'm not do whatever, whatever. Yeah, whatever you need to do to relax, because you play. I feel like you play your best, even if you're gonna go out and like you're fucking Slipknot or, or you know, you still like. You got to be relaxed to perform your best. Athletes, musicians, whatever you're doing, especially if it's a physical thing that we do. So our bodies are involved along with our brains, obviously. But um, for me, being a drummer, uh, it's important to warm up a little bit, get your muscles warmed up and your blood flowing. I'm fortunate to have a drum set backstage and we get to jam a little bit before we go on and so you're not cold and you because you get out there and you're all excited and adrenaline's going and you, and you tense up and you can cramp. I played first songs where like I felt like my fingers gonna get can't fucking hold the thing. It's not good. So you gotta um, just and and be uh, if you can to know. I don't get nervous before we play, but I, I get excited. But nervous for me is like if I don't know what I'm gonna do. And sometimes that's good too, because I love to take risks, musical risks, and 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 playing with these guys. We try shit all the time, and you don't really grow unless you just try something that you don't know what's going to happen. You might fall on your ass and might fall apart, but it might be something really great. And uh, you find with other musicians that you can trust that that you can do that with is really a rewarding thing. But um, and then with the Chili Peppers, we do that too. We don't play every song exactly the same. We jam and we try new shit and it's fun. But if if I don't know what I'm gonna do when I go out there, it's like uh, I could get nervous. But um, in general, just re being relaxed makes everything uh, flow better and you play better. So whatever you have to do to be relaxed, meditating, having a beer, you know, going into the office, whatever you want to do. You know, um, you fi you'll find, it. you'll figure it out. You know, some people like to like run and, you know, some people. Box, yeah. yeah. I've seen people beat up other people and then go out on stage. <laughs> I'm really relaxed now. I just beat the shit out of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not what you want to do every night, but uh, no, I don't know. I, you know, it's all different, as you can see. But, um, that said, I, hopefully I can speak for the other meat bats that we're, um, you know, we're, we're happy that you guys are here because you're passionate about what you love to do and playing music has been a wonderful lifelong love and, and passion for us. Um, we're so fortunate to be able to do what we love to do and, and make a living at it, and travel, and if you get lucky, you play with some friends, and you make a record, and you know, and, and, and people wanna come see you, and you get to play places and, and do things that you've never done, and it's, it's unbelievable. We've had, uh, you know, an incredible lives, and, and the experiences that we've had being musicians um, has been, I wouldn't change it for anything. And sometimes I think like being a musician is kinda like, you know, like, you know, kind of like being a, a jester or a clown or something or an entertainer. But when you play music and you see how it affects people and how they are just like, you know, this song changed my life or when I was really down or, I, you know, listened to this song and it really changed my life. And when you little song that you make in the garage with your buddies can affect somebody over in freaking Russia that likes it and, and really means something to them, it's a really important, noble thing that we do, us being musicians. And um, you guys are going to carry on that tradition. We're old and dead almost, but you guys are young and vibrant. And who's going to be the next, you know, whatever? Um, that guy or that girl or someone talented and smart and it's really great in the music business now. Like, yeah, there's somebody here right now. One of, you, one of these... One of these guys or girls, maybe it's you. Are you? Hey, well, you kind of talk like Bob Dylan a little bit. <laughs> right? Here's the next Jimi Hendrix, you know? Where's the next Jim Morrison? I mean, they, 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 
we need that. And so this is an important place. As much as I like joke about it, am I? This is great. And um, you're lucky to have this. So take advantage of it. All right, thanks for coming, everybody. We're going to play a couple songs. So now that you're all, you're all relaxed, we're all relaxed, we're going to do a little song. We're talking about improvising. We're going to do a little, little improvising for you right here.
All right. Uh-huh. Uh, thanks, Woogie. Thanks, everyone here at MI, for having us. Yeah, just thanks for coming and keep doing what you're doing, all right? Don't forget to work hard. Be good. All right? All right? All right? All right?
Thank you.